Okay, so we're going to do a start, stop, push button for this project. This is Designer Pro, and I'll I'll talk about some of the uh, some of the strange things I guess we'll say that this software has. So let's get started. So uh, what I've got is um, on the hardware layout. I went ahead and created the 16 in, 16 out, and the multi-function card. If I double click on the input module, <clears throat> you can see that uh, I've got a tag name for the I.O. And um, I'd like that to be called stop push button. So I'm going to click on it and type uh, M1 dot stop PB. And I can change it there. Okay, I just have to have the M1 in front of it. So stop, push button. Input 2, I'd like that to be M1 dot start, push button. Okay, I'm going to close that. Uh, on the outputs, output 1, would like that to be M2 dot run how about we'll just call it run okay and let's let's just double check to make sure that ah, i didn't click apply okay let's do that one more time m1 dot stop pb and m1 dot start pb apply changes let's double double check that it didn't take that one for some reason inner apply changes let's double check yep outputs yep okay so <clears throat> I can change the names of the hardware IO points at the card level okay so what that does is when I come back over here and I want to type the word stop PB uh, that won't work I have to use m1 dot stop PB okay um, so let's go back. I want to show you one other thing. So let's go back to the input module. Let's say input three. I want that to be a, a limit switch. LS1, enter, error. So I can't just name it like the name of the switch. I have to put the M1 in front of it. So it's got it's got that little issue so as long as i'm okay with that and as long as i'm aware of that it's okay so let's let's just go with that there is another way to do it though so if you really don't want to see the m1 in front of it what you can do is this let me delete this contact for a second and i'll show you a kind of a kind of a technique it's not a trick but it's a technique so what you can do is use an open contact and you can refer to m1 dot input underscore one if we hadn't changed the name that's what it would be and then i can set up an output coil and i can call that output coil stop push button okay so when this input turns on this output known as stop push button this coil will turn on and then i can use a contact from that coil in the program as stop PB. So if you're determined not to have that M1 in front of it, you can do it. However, it's it may not really be worth all that extra effort because now you're adding more and more stuff in your program. So I just wanted to show you that so that if you're really determined not to have the M1 or M2 in front of it, you, you can get rid of it, but it's just extra work, okay? So let's get back to the start stop. I'm going to go m1.stop enter. I'm going to do a m1.start pb enter. I'm going to do an output and this was called run I believe. 
and I need a branch around my start push button so I'm gonna I'm gonna click on that and I'm just gonna draw here for a second okay and then I'm gonna pull over a contact hit escape Okay, and go back to the drawing tool and sketch that in. Okay, and this is also known as run. Okay, so there's my stop start run, my CLN circuit. Uh, let's, let's write that to the virtual controller. Let's go online with it. Let's go to monitor mode. Let's turn on the stop push button. Then I'm going to toggle the start push button. And of course you see the ceiling is, is still on, right? So if I wanted to bring an auxiliary contact off of a run starter, I would use the auxiliary input instead of the run contact because this is all just logic. So, if, you know, if this was a real starter and it did not pull in, then I would need to know that. And that's where I would use the actual auxiliary contact right here. Okay. Uh, to do that, I would probably come down to input three. Input three is the, uh, would be the aux input. Um, I was trying to show like split screens, like floating screens, but I don't think I can do that here. So uh, let's let's uh, right click, turn off the stop push button. Let's turn it back on. Let's toggle it. Let's go back and see what's going on here. Oh, I didn't bring run to the output. Okay, well, um, let's do that. Uh, let's um, let's go back to edit mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a branch in right here with another coil. Yeah, I don't really want to see that. It doesn't look right. Let's uh, let's do this. So what I'm trying to do is is turn on an output, an actual output. So uh, that's going to be uh, output. Two. Let's just call it output two for right now. And let's go back to monitor mode. And let's toggle the stop push button. Let's toggle the start. Let's put stop back on and let's toggle the start. And you'll see that, of course, the output turns on. So um, it does work. It's a uh, it's easier to run it from this screen because, you know, it's kind of tedious going back and forth and clicking all these things, but uh, you can get a little visual there if you'd like to see that. Um, also, some other things while we're here, down here on this, the analog section, you can see that there's actually a number there. Uh, the analog functions work on numbers, so like zero to a, a thousand, let's say. It's not really a thousand, but you know, zero to some number. And um, basically, if you uh, punch in a number here, it'll generate a current on the output connection. So uh, you can also watch the the numbers. You know, like uh, like if you feed in a certain amount of current, you can simulate current coming in and see how your program reacts to it as well. So. Uh, it's interesting. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, if you if you wanted more space here, I didn't really mention this earlier, but you can go up to edit mode and insert a row, like let's say five rows. And um, kind of broke my logic there. So if you if you want, you can pack a lot of stuff in a rung if you just want to. The only time you would do that is like if you had several several outputs that sort of work together. You can keep them all in the same rung, uh, or you can just create a new rung for each one. So it's kind of flexible like that. Like this is a little crowded here. Maybe I want to bring that down just a little bit. 
make it look a little bit better um, something like that um, but otherwise there, there we go it's uh, simple enough go back to edit mode I'm gonna turn on my stop push button I'm gonna toggle the start of course everything seals in I hit the stop button here and I knock it out okay so there we go